A reading from Genesis, the first and third chapters. Don't worry, I'm not reading all three chapters. Okay? Just some of the readings from the first chapter, some of the readings from the third. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock. And above all beasts of the field, on your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. O Lord, have mercy on us. A reading from Romans, the fifth chapter. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have received, much more have the grace of God and the free gift of, by, gra- by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought con- condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. If because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Holy Bible only has one story. It is the story of salvation. But in order for us to understand the story, we have to go all the way back to its beginning. The story of salvation does not begin with the incarnation, which we will celebrate in a few weeks. It doesn't begin with the Incarnation, though everything before the Incarnation points directly to the Incarnation. And everything since, everything that flows out of that flows directly from the Incarnation. 
And this is the root of our salvation. The roots of salvation sprout from the Jesse tree. You see, this is Jesus' story. And it's your story. It's my story. It's the story of all mankind. When we walk outside, we look around and we see trees. We see trees everywhere. They might be oak trees, there might be pine trees, ash trees, ap apple, tr apple trees. I'm thinking pot. I gotta, I gotta say it. They might be maple trees. They might be Christmas trees. But they all have one thing in common, and that is that they all start from a seed. From a seed that is so small that the rest of the world will not notice the seed itself. That's the beginning of our story. All the way back to the beginning. Tonight we're going to, and, and throughout the next three weeks, we are going to talk about the Jesse tree. Because the Jesse tree is where salvation actually begins. That's where it grows. But first, we have to understand why this is important. So we go all the way back to the very beginning, and we look at the Creator's handiwork. We all know the story of creation. It began with the words, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so it is that the history of all things then began. The clock started ticking. The greatness of that creation, or I should say the, the greatest of all the things that God created occurred on the sixth day when he created man in his own image. That creation was not by accident or by chance. That happened by the intentional act of an eternal God. Everything that was created before man was created for man. You see, before God could create man, God had to create the things that would sustain man. This week, I urge you to go back and go all the way back to the beginning and read that first chapter. Read about creation and think about what you're reading, what was created, when it was created, and why it was created. Because now you know the context. Because on the sixth day, God created man in his own image. And God created again and again and again. And everything that he created, he said, it is good. And it was good. And it was very good. Because all things worked together the way that they were intended. All things worked according to their purpose. All things were in harmony with one another. The man and the woman lived in perfect harmony and in perfect peace with nature. They lived in perfect peace with one another. And they lived in perfect harmony and in perfect peace with the one who had created them. Doesn't that sound lovely? Well, for all believers, we will experience that same thing, that same thing that they experienced in the garden, we too will experience. And right now, that's really hard for us to even imagine because sin and all of its consequences were not known. They were not known to Adam, to Eve, to the animals, to the world. They couldn't imagine the world that we live in today. 
and throughout history, we see that man has always dreamed of an earthly Eden, a way to go back, a way to live in peace. How many great songs and great movies were made with the idea that we can indeed experience peace and harmony with one another. But the problem is, is that we seek to create a utopia of humanity's own making. We do that when we fail to understand that only God can create that which is truly good, that which is very good. So for us today, Eden is just a memory. It is a thing in our rearview mirror. It is a thing of the past. Because what was once good did not last. What does last is the consequences of what happened in that garden. And we can see the cause by just looking around. We can see the cause when we look in the mirror. When we look around, we see nothing but brokenness. And that brokenness is a product of sin. We look around and we see hatred and we see war and we see any number of ways that we actually create war with one another. It may not be a hot war. That's where bombs are actually dropping. But how many of us experience types of cold wars? Either at home or at work. And I hate to say it, but sometimes even in the church. We look around and we see despair and we see hopelessness. And our eyes are keenly aware of what was lost in the garden. We all know the story. The serpent tempted the woman. Her husband stood by and watched and eventually he joined in the eating of the forbidden fruit. But their initial sin was not in the eating. You see, the initial sin of Adam and Eve began in their hearts as they chose to reject the Creator's one command because there was a seed that was planted. It was a seed of doubt. And that one seed of doubt caused the gates of Eden to be closed to all of humanity forever. As the Creator stepped back, what was He supposed to do? How was He supposed to punish those who have sinned against Him, those who reject Him? He pronounced judgment. He pronounced judgment before they were even guilty. If you eat, of that one tree, you will surely die. But thankfully, we have a God of love. And a death death sentence has been commuted. You see, because he's not going to leave us without hope. And he's not going to leave us without some form of redemption. This is not the nature of the triune God. This is the God of love. He is love itself. And that love reached out to Adam. It reached out to Eve and it reached out to all of their descendants. It reaches out to us today. Because so great is his love that he would not destroy his creation or leave it to itself. In love he created Everything that the Lord created, he created out of love. And because he loves the creation, he would provide a way of redemption, a way of redeeming everything that has gone sideways. 
This was a plan that he had from all eternity. This was a plan that he had in place knowing how we would respond to that first temptation. And that plan, that plan of his included a price. And that price is a price that only he could pay. A price that was paid by a lamb slain before the foundation of the world, as we read in Revelation 13. So the promise of a new creation, a new seed, we see that a new seed is promised, and sin brings death. Because sin brings death, we find that death brings life. Through Adam and Eve and all of the subsequent generations that have come since then have borne the curse that sin has earned. But thankfully, our loving creator has not deserted us. You see, to the contrary, he has not only embraced us, but he actually joined and joined himself to us. In our reading, we heard the first promise of salvation, and it was given immediately after the first sin, where darkness was introduced into a world that was filled with nothing but light. He passed judgment on us. But he also passed judgment on the serpent. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your heel and uh, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Seed. I love the word seed. In Hebrew, the word is zarah. Everybody say zarah. Zarah, zarah. Seed is also the word that we use for offspring. And here, we see that the seed of God shines through the darkness. There is only one seed that can, that would, that did defeat the serpent. And yet that seed would not be the seed of the man and the woman. As every other human birth would be, with the way that we were born, it takes one man, one woman, biology 101. No. This seed is a seed of the woman conjoined with the Holy Spirit. This is a miraculous, it is a divine conception. The tree of Jesse begins with a seed. And we're going to get more into Jesse next week, okay? Right now we're covering the bases leading up to Jesse, okay? The tree of Jesse begins with a seed, a seed that is present but is dormant from Eve. You see, in love, God remembered his promise. Through every generation after the fall, through every generation of fallen humanity, he still remembered. And through those generations, that seed that was promised, as the even as the gates of Eden were being closed, that promise would remain present even if it was hidden from our human eyes. And in the fullness of time, in the womb of the daughter of Eve, the Virgin Mary, that promised seed would then spring forth and grow. This was the seed of the woman. This was the seed of the Holy Spirit. This was the seed that was promised at the very beginning. From her womb would come forth the creator himself. 
as he joined himself to his creation in the God-man that we call Jesus Christ. In the God-man that we call Emmanuel, which means God with us. And the God-man who would be our Redeemer. You see, all that was lost in Adam has been restored in the seed of the woman, just as it was promised. And that seed is Christ himself, our Messiah. Here is the Lamb of God the one and perfect sacrifice whose blood reverses the curse of the fall. That also comes forth bringing grace and forgiveness to all humankind. So this season we celebrate Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man. This is the new Adam who bears the sin of the old Adam and every Adam since, and he carried it to the cross. From the seed of that first tree in Eden came death, but from the tree of Calvary would come life, a new life, the promised life, a new life for all humanity to embrace. This is the Christ of Easter. How how many of us remember two years ago when I first got here, our first Christmas, I said that you cannot separate Christmas and Easter. You can't have Easter without Christmas. And without Christmas, Easter makes no sense. Our loving creator kind of knew what he was doing. This, this baby that we're going to celebrate, this baby of Christmas is the promised seed of Easter, whose resurrection finds all the universe has been given a new a new hope which sustains all of the redeemed, all of those who believe in him alone. This is Jesus. This is the seed of Jesse's tree. And it is through him alone that Eden is restored. And it is good. It is very, very good. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you promised long ago a Savior to overcome sin and death, and you fulfilled that promise in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We pray that you would fill us with hope as we await Christ's return, which will bring the seed of your promise to its full fruition, and that our lives may show forth the joy of trusting in you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Heavenly Father, hear our words as we pray the words that your Son has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.